Good morning and welcome to Morning Moments. I'm so glad that you joined us today. We have our guest today is an actor, songwriter, singer, writer uh, from Indiana, Michelle <laughs> King. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You got a lot of things that you do. Tell me what, what, what do you do and why do you do it? What do I do and why do I do it? We'll give you a, just a, a quick brief of who I am. Um, my husband and I live out on a 25 acre farm. Um, we have 10 kids, um, two girls and eight boys. Yep. Uh, two of them have been adopted and then the others uh, are biological. And I also have a four in heaven waiting on us someday when we get up there. So we live out on the farm and we have a ministry that operates out of here called Lexi's Voice and they work with kids uh, who suffer through domestic violence situations and their families. So they board our, their horses with us and we have some horses and God's done all kinds of crazy stuff in our life. But right now that's currently kind of what we're doing here. And then obviously raising our kids I have three at home still. The rest are grown and old. I have a, um, a nine-year-old granddaughter, nine going on 16, I think. <laughs> and uh, we do that, and we sing worship at our church, and um, I homeschool my kids. I've been homeschooling for about 25 years. So that's what I do on that end. I have a whole bunch of other titles that I do. But um, then on the stuff that's the beyond my family passion, um, I am an actress. I've done theater my whole life. I've done uh, TV uh, and film probably about the past 12 years or so, but it's really been within like the past four or five years that um, I've been able to do a few projects and God seems to be creating some momentum there. Um, he's had me write a couple of songs. I have a couple of them copyrighted, uh, working on another one to be copyright. Um, copyrighted. Let's see. I'm working on a screenplay. Um, it's called Moving the River, and it is about um, kind of our journey um, with through adoption. And uh, we had a psych psychiatrist tell us once that um, one of our sons was dealing with his mental issues and the stuff that he was going through from his past. And a lot of things were disconnected because we dealt with RAD and some other issues. And she said, you know, you're trying to move the flow of the river one rock at a time. So the title is Moving the River. Hmm. So working on that. Um, I have a heart and a passion for single moms. I have a heart and a passion for families who have been through domestic abuse um, on a board for, for one that uh, is dealing with that and trafficked women and stuff. And We've been on quite a journey. My husband and I have been married almost 26 years, and we we have definitely felt like an Abraham Sarah type of situation where God says, "Go here," doesn't tell us, <laughs> you know, where's here. I'm not telling you. Just just get your stuff and let's go. And and I'm going okay, but I, you know, my personality, I'm more type A. I need to have all my ducks in a row. And he's like, you know, your silly little girl, and just go, and I'll tell you when you get there. And we have forged so many paths that are not the norm. You know, even a lot of our friends who are believers have been like, uh, you know, this isn't something that God would tell you to do. And we're like, well, he is telling us to do it. So, you know, we're going to do it. Um, so the reason that I do what I do and why I have such a passion is that I came from domestic abuse. Um, I came from sexual abuse. I came from those things. I was raised by a very difficult, um, mentally and emotionally abusive father, kind of the whole narcissistic type situation. Um, and I have seen what God has done in my life. And I have seen the freedom that he has given me and I have all this creativity in my head that is wanting to get out to be able to reach people and then not, I don't want to say normal. I don't want to say that. That's not the right word, but a non-conventional type way. Um, or that if they 
hear something that I have written or they see something that I have written or that I am put a, brought a character to life that it would then make them feel less outsider or less not seen and that their hearts could then be turned to, okay, if this person has been through this and they're living like this and they seem to be okay, what, what is going on there? And, you know, and, and having it so that their hearts would then turn to maybe want to try to have a relationship with God, or if they know who God is, but they just have, they're angry with him. They don't want to have anything to do with him. Um, that they can, something in that could change, not so much by what I say, but how I live and what I do, if that makes sense. You know, often uh, people allow the pain of the moment or the pain from the past to identify who they are rather mm -hmm. than, and it also keeps them from their purpose. And yes. uh, that pain from the past or moment can define us in victory or could define us in defeat, you know, depending on how, what we allow it to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's been something that just in these past few months, God's been speaking to me about, you know, I've had this, this room from when I was five years old and the first time that I was sexually assaulted and I locked that little girl in that room and I've never, ever let her out. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Actually, I don't care, you know, but they always say as an actress, you don't ever tell how old you are. I'll be 51 in August. So, you know, I was five years old. So it was a long, long time ago. And it defined who I was from that moment on. Yeah. So, yeah, I still had my outgoing personality. I still wanted to make people laugh. I still, but it changed who I was and I wanted to become whoever I was with because who I was was never going to be good enough kind of thing. And just in these past few months at 50 years old, God is saying, I want you to open that door and let that little girl out. We need to talk to her. We need to face her. She, she needs to heal. You healed in a whole bunch of ways, but this room that you have been, and I even wrote a song called beauty of the broken specifically about this. And, um, so many people have are in that that iron room that they lock themselves away and then everything else in their life is is built around that trauma or whatever happened in that situation and it changes the trajectory of who they are or they may still try to go down the path but they do it broken because there's a piece of them that is still broken. We all have that stuff, yeah. but there's a lot of people who, you know, we, you know, the story where it says, you know, God will show up at the door and say, can I come in? Well, you just let him in the foyer <laughs> because the other rooms in your house are a mess. And then you kind of, you get mature and you grow up and you let God go through and clean up the different areas of the house and say, you know, you don't have to live like this, you know, let me in. And then there's that one room that you won't ever, ever, ever let God or anybody in because you can't. And there's so many people who are in that place who have never let that go. They have held onto it like just impenetrable kind of thing. And I feel that there's so many people who are in that and God is wanting to get that open for these people to be completely free. Uh, one of one of the sayings I, I, I have on my Facebook that I came up with a few months to, months ago is when when surrender is your reasonable service, then great things are about in store for you. Mm -hmm. and, and and it takes that surrender to trust God to every every corner of our heart, every mm -hmm. avenue of our heart, rather than said. I, I'll let you have everything, but not right here. But when that surrender takes place, when we, when we get to know people, even as Christians, don't take the time to know who God is, to know how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. He's not going to love you any more or any less 
than he does this moment. That's how he, that, that's his, his, I can't understand that. There's nothing I can do to cause him to love me anymore or any less. Yeah. That's a, a remarkable kind of love. It is. And, and that's what somehow we've got to get that message to folks, don't we? Well, and it's been such a lie, such a lie that has been given to people for ever and ever and ever. And it just is, I mean, even I grew, I grew up, my mom got saved when I was three. So I grew up in the church. So I knew God growing up, but I completely, completely walked away. And I don't want to get into my testimony, but just, you know, having two worlds, it felt like I had an angel and Satan as parents, you know, because my dad hated everything about Christianity. And then my mom was overly trying to, you know, make sure you're a Christian shoving it down your throat just because she didn't want the antithesis of that. She didn't want his influence to have me run away, you know, from God. So I had both of those going on in my mind and in my heart. So the visual of who God was, was always what my dad looked like. And then you add in the lies of what the world tells you, of what the enemy tells you, of what yourself tells you, and you layer all those on top of it. It makes it almost impossible for people to ever seem to get and fathom that God loves you no matter what. It, it just, it's been a lie of the ages, but it just, it has definitely gotten more blatant and more layered as far as the guilt and the condemnation that has been placed on people. And that's not what God, that's not what God wants. I know that. I want to, I want to thank Michelle for, for, for sharing her heart today. And um, I do want to have her back to tell us that story <laughs> of how, how she came to the Lord. And, and I'm going to try to hold her to that and have her come back no, at, a, absolutely. at a future date. Michelle uh, is going, and we're going to put a lot of information down below of what she's done and what projects she's doing. Uh, when you think of Michelle, uh, Michelle King, I want you to pray for her. And anytime you're thinking of her, pray that God would help her with her ministry, her, her career, her farm, all that God has for oh, yes. her. I mean, and it, and it could come in the middle of the night. You could be driving by Burger King and you see the word King and you think Michelle <laughs> King, I need to pray for Michelle King. Pray for her. Amen. Amen. And uh, so that God can continue to bless her and in uh, uh, her her endeavors. Um, uh, thank you, Michelle, for, for coming on, on board this morning for us. No and, problem, uh, I I'm, it. I'm looking forward to having you back on, our, uh, on Morning Moments. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for coming. There are some of you that need to hear this today. And there are also some of you that need to pass this on in your Facebook and also pass on the YouTube interview to others and others that you think this is what they exactly what they need for the day. And uh, I want you to do that and pass that on. Thank you all for coming and please keep coming back for some more morning moments.